Welcome to Now You Talking, which is a series of videos we are putting together that defines key terms in the UTalk framework. Today, we're going to be talking about the term consciousness. The concepts of consciousness are potentially very broad, and some people use the term or make the claim that the entire universe is conscious. There are also sort of transcendent experience of consciousness. We're going to be focused today on the sort of more everyday meaning so that we can get clear in our naturalistic framework what consciousness means in the everyday context. The word consciousness really is associated, or it's good to break it down, into two different words. One word is awareness, and the other word is experience. And then to understand the different meanings of consciousness is to understand different ways in which awareness and experience go together. The first meaning of the word consciousness is a broad meaning of the word awareness and can be defined in terms of functional awareness and responsivity. This is the kind of awareness that can be seen in the outside and you know it when somebody's paying attention to something else. So for example, if somebody were asleep on the couch and you ask them a question and they don't respond, they are unconscious. They are not exhibiting functional awareness and responsivity. This is a very broad definition of consciousness because actually it expands essentially to the entire living kingdom. That is, you could argue that a plant is conscious of the sunlight, at least in the sense that it shows functional awareness and responsivity. Likewise, bacteria show functional awareness and responsivity when they avoid certain toxins to stay alive. Now, this meaning does not mean that there is something that it is like to be a plant or that the plant has particular feelings or knowledge of the sunlight in any way that would be conscious, at least in the second meaning of the term conscious. The second meaning of the term conscious refers to a subjective conscious experience of being, and this for many is a primary referent of the term. Indeed, it becomes fa famous uh, when Thomas Nagel articulates the view, what is it like to be a bat, where he defines consciousness as what is it like the that which it is like to be in the world, to have subjective conscious experience of being. We can see in subjective conscious experience of being from an evolutionary perspective, at least two and maybe three steps in it. I would argue that there's an initial step of core feelings in the form of what we might call sentience. Sentience refers to the elements of qualia, especially valence qualia in terms of pleasure and pain. It might involve some sensory elements, but then the question is, are they actually coordinated network to give an inner mind's eye? The subjective experience of being that we have is that not only are, do we have qualia, but they're networked together to give us a perceptual gestalt that again connects to our feelings about ourself and the world. So this inner mind's eye is an extension and undoubtedly uh, an extension of the initial sentient feelings. So the second definition of consciousness refers to subjective conscious experience of being, and we can at least layer it into core qualia feelings that then get organized into an inner mind's eye. John Verbeke calls adverbial uh, uh, qualia that organize our adjectival qualia. The final brings awareness back into it, and this is awareness of experience where you have access to experience extended over time and then recursively become aware of that experience that's self-consciousness. So self-consciousness is when you can acknowledge that you're having an experience and report on it. So this is the difference between experiencing red and somebody coming along and saying, hey, here I am experiencing red. Let me tell you about it. it reminds me kind of like cherries. It's the second order self-consciousness that some people mean. Indeed, when Rene Descartes talked about human consciousness and the human mind, this is the dimension that he meant. We can see, if we go back to the mind video, that there's a lot of relationship between mind one, two, three, and the different dimensions of consciousness. Indeed, mind one refers to neural functional, mediated functional awareness and responsivity that may not have any sentience involved. Mind two directly relates to sentience and subjective conscious experience of being. And mind three relates to sub humans' self-conscious awareness, justification, and reasoning. So, we can demonstrate that we can link the concept of mind with the concept of consciousness. Utah also provides a functional model of human consciousness in the form of what's called the updated tripartite model. This delineates human consciousness in the domains of the mind to experiential self, which delineates both the witness function awareness and the way a primate self will grip 
based on what's important, what ought to be, how it feels, that interpretation, and then begin to move emotions, energized motions toward the world. That experiential self is one domain, our primate domain of consciousness. Then we have an egoic narrating, and we have a personal. We'll talk more when we do some of the you talk 20 analysis about how to delineate that. But I want to express that we have a mo functional model in addition, to a in addition to a descriptive model. So fundamentally, what is consciousness? Consciousness pertains to awareness and experience. We can divide it up into three different domains, starting with functional awareness and responsivity as the broadest definition, actually goes all the way into the living kingdom. I'm hesitant to use that term, but many people do, and we better be aware of it. The second term, the referent, is subjective conscious experience of being, which we can identify both in terms of sentience or an inner mind's eye of a full perceptual experience with emotional feelings. And then finally, self-conscious, which is a recurrence of awareness on experience that enables us as humans to justify ourselves. So, you talk frames consciousness across these three domains, and that gives clarity to this potentially very confusing construct.